And I'll, I'll tell you about a recent study that we've done, um, which is a really different type of research for me. So it's a cross-cultural study. Um, so if I said to you, for example, um, uh, if I give you an emotion, and I'm going to ask you what color you think that emotion is associated with. Okay. So if I say um, red, what emotion do you feel? Passion, isn't it? Okay. So something love, something intense. Um, but some other people I might, go say, anger. might people might go with the anger. Oh, anger, yeah. Um, uh, but if I gave you um, or if I do it the other way around. So if I say sad, um, what color comes to mind? Blue. Right? Blue. If I say joy, what color comes to mind? Pink. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, so many people say yellow uh, when they do this. So the study that we were involved in is a cross-cultural study in 55 different languages about doing what we just did, where you give people um, emotion words and then ask them what colors they associate with those. So they have like a color wheel and they can pick out what the color is. And the reason um, the, the um, sort of the crosstalk between color and emotion is kind of weird, right? Like why would colors have emotions attached to them? Colors are, you know, are about um, vision and emotions are about feelings. And this is what we call a cross-modal correspondence. These are things that our mind does, is it uses one system to actually think about another system. Um, and there are several of them. So there are certain things like pitch, high pitches sound like they're higher up in the world, even though they're not. Um, so that's, that's another example of a cross-modal correspondence. So what we did was across these is it, is it true, like when we say blue, sadness is blue, and we talk about people being depressed, feeling blue, um, or we can talk about, you know, feeling sunny um, as, is, as, is, as if somehow something that, about the weather could be an emotion. So this sort of crosstalk, is that universal? Um, in which case it might be something sort of fundamental about the mind, like maybe we associate red with anger because faces get red when we're angry or is it are they just metaphors that different languages choose to talk about their emotions in different sorts of ways in which case you would think that in different countries you might you you might have very different sorts of metaphors and so what we found is that across these 55 countries um a a, a certain amount of agreement um, across those countries that suggest something fundamental. One of the, the strongest ones is the association of joy with yellow, um, but there are others. So sadness, black and blue. Um, love is associated usually with red or pink, um, but could also be white, uh, depending on. So you get you get cultural variations. Um, Languages that are similar to each other tend to have similar ones. Countries that share borders tend to have similar ones. So there is something about the culture that shapes it, but there is also something fundamental that underlies it. So one thing that we found with it is trying to, trying to look at this is we looked at the relationship between latitude, um, so how far away people lived from the border, and the association between yellow and joy. And what you find is people who live closer to the equator are less likely to call yellow joyous. The further away from the equator you live, the more joyful yellow is to you. Um, now, of course, we, we, that, we can't say for sure why that is, but I think we could now start to look for other examples of those types of associations because an obvious interpretation is that in places that have long, have cold, colder weather, um, and particularly long, dark winters, um, yellow is a, a symbol of life-saving goodness of the sun. If you live close to the equator, yellow can the sun can kill you. So um, the the association and the associations that we have might depend might be things that are actually embedded in our 
um, evolution, our cultural evolution, which is differs not just on the culture and the language we speak, but also where we live. Um, and so we're now trying to look to see if there are other examples of this where these cross-modal correspondences actually make a lot of sense. Oh, that's, that's extremely fascinating. I, um, it's a really fun study. So I, I can say, I, have, I, I can even tell you, yeah. we, collected, we collected the New Zealand data for it. And um, New Zealanders have a strong association between sad and blue. Uh, one of the strongest um, in the world, actually. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, but but they're, they're, and what we would like to be doing next is, I know there are some linguists who are looking in uh, te reo, so te reo Māori, um, so the um, language of uh, Māori people in New Zealand may very well have different cultural heritage, and, and so we've never really teased it apart to look at the difference between English speakers and Māori speakers in New Zealand. Yeah, I, I was thinking of the loved one made a lot of sense that some people use white while others use red uh, because I, I kind of linked it to wedding dresses and I feel in a lot of Western cultures, the wedding dress is white while in India, generally you wear a bright color like red or orange or something yeah. on your wedding day. So th uh, that kind of, yeah, that kind of thing and, and, was and in it, my mind immediately yeah. when you said that and so that might not even be about the language but about a cultural um, practice right that um, we wear different colors to portray different emotions and that just might be a cultural thing and that's where the association could come from or at least somewhere the variations could come from yeah makes complete sense uh do any kind of colors hit home, Maria, in your mind when you think back to Romania? Uh, I thought also, I guess I don't have a strong association between yellow and happiness, I guess because we get a bit more sun than uh, more northern countries. Um, also, I don't really, I know that the, the image of the sun is a yellow a ball of light but for me the sun is more white than it is yellow mm -hmm. so. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the blue I, I find blue very calm uh, I would find grey very not nice <laughs> yeah. yeah so the extent to which our, these things are embedded in our language um, is you know a, an interesting question. It's one way of also sort of getting at that question about how a, a way of understanding do people in different cultures have different emotional experiences. Um, so language might be one way we can think about how to understand um, someone else's emotions. Our emotions are so deeply personal to us. Um, it's hard to imagine that different people have different emotional experiences. Uh, and we can only describe them with our words, really. And so there's a real limitation there, which is true of pretty much all anything that's about conscious experience, right? There's always that barrier between my consciousness and everyone else's consciousness. 